troubled by the damning allegations leveled against Minister Nigel Darmlal. An indigenous man, Brian Wilson, said he traveled from Region 7 to join the protest for the local government and regional development minister, Nigel Darmlal, to be fired over allegations that he raped a 16-year-old indigenous girl at his government-provided home in the city. Wilson was speaking to us in front of the office of the president and said staying home was not an option. I'm very hot of it because I have children, grandchildren, also great grand, right? And leaders in this in this modern age, we supposed that you know leaders supposed to set example. What the youth will say? I feel that you know it is right that justice must prevail when we have something like this in the country. Wilson said more indigenous leaders are not coming forward because of their affiliation to the governing People's Progressive Party. Most of them uh, is a member of the, the ruling party. So they feel, they feel so shy and, you know, they feel like it is wrong to come out and, you know, step out to, to make their voice heard. They always shame and, you know, shy to express themselves. But I would give my advice to stand strong as Guyanese, right? And try to fight for Guyanese rights like every other race in this country. Also on the protest line for the four-day running was Skatia Thomas, a mother who vowed to show up in support of the teenager and her family on a daily basis. I think this is important to every single Guyanese. As a parent, as an indigenous woman, I think that it is important for us to find justice for this little girl. I'm a mother and from the first from the first message that I read from this child, it hurt me. It it really hurt me and even every day I come out and I stand here to support because there's just an anger in me that is not it, it's not going away. This child is not not only physically, emotionally. This is this is this is a, a, a situation here that this is going to be with her for the rest of her life. And as a mother, just imagine one of my niece or, or I have a daughter. And I, like, I can't even begin to imagine the hurt and the pain that this young lady is going through. And even her parents. Over the Otter Chung Conference Center, where another protest was held and attended by several rights groups, among them the Amerindian People's Association and Red Thread, where concerns were again raised about the teenager's welfare. You know, indigenous communities have been paid facing a lot of systemic failures and systemic shortcomings uh, and the whole legislative process, the illegal process, access to justice and so have been very difficult for indigenous communities. Um, as far as I can recall, my hope, my hope as an indigenous person, my hope as an indigenous woman, my hope as a mother having a young indigenous child that the systems the system caters for very trans a uh, very transparent transparent process that the alleged victim has all the means to legal redress that was jean la rose of the amerindian people's association she explained that while allegations were made in the past in regards to the minister while he held another position no one came forward. But we have heard stories um, from time to time. We have been interested in following up stories. Unfortunately, alleged victims again here have been reluctant to bring any stories forward. By the time you hear a story um, is being told, it's also being recanted at the same time. So one can never get anybody to say, hey, this has happened to me. This is what I want. This is how I want it done. And therefore, that has always been the impediment and therefore it comes back to us wanting to see a, system, a fair system to put in place. Joy Marcus of Red Thread said it is their hope that the Director of Public Prosecution will advise that Darmalal face charges. We also understand that the child has a right to her own legal representation and if she choose not to have the DPP as her representation, we're hoping that they would allow her to give her that right to choose who she wants to represent her to prosecute her case. She has to know who she feels comfortable and confident 
in prosecuting our cases. Look, oftentimes we've seen a lot of cases that have been thrown out for lack of evidence and all of this, and we're hoping that the police will do their work effectively to ensure that this child gets the justice that she deserves. That Mr. Darren Lau, who has um, been accused of rape and sexual assault, that this the justice would send a message to all the other sexual predators out here because we this is just one that we're hearing of but we know that there are a whole lot more too many of our children's lives have been destroyed by this this criminal act um and, and in the case of, of this incident we understand that this is not the first time such complaint has been made towards this individual and our question is why hasn't something been done before now Marcus said when stories such as these are being recanted on a daily basis, then there is cause for a deeper investigation. You know, sometimes the argument is that um, people would pull back their statements and so on. But if you hear, if you're hearing this from more than one person, whether, whether in the last round they pull back, it is telling you that something is up and therefore that you should have been looking into it and not waiting for things to escalate like this. So I'm hoping that, that we could create a system that could protect our children because our children have the right to protection. Marco said too that they made attempts to speak to the child, but are being prevented from doing so. When they reach out to the Child Care Protection Agency, they were told that the teenager is in the care of the state.